and this is the last badass of history, but this is recent history. We're going to talk about Mr. Bob Ross or an actual Robert, rest in peace. Robert Norman Ross, a, a, a wholesome badass of history. So this is not the same kind of warmongering uh, badass that we've been talking about uh, most of this evening. And of course, I guess Margaret Hamilton wasn't a warmongering uh, badass, but I'm just saying this guy is a badass because he just wanted to, and continuing my theme that I mentioned earlier, he wanted to just make the world a better place and really rarely if ever, well, he did make probably some money on a few paintings, but he rarely made any money on his works. So let's look into this. So he was born October 29th, 1942. Um, and I'm just actually looking here. Yeah. I actually pulled up the wrong picture there. So this is a young Bob Ross, I believe, over here with the glasses on. Um, he was born night, uh, October 29th, 1942 in Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, he was an American painter and television personality whose popular PBS television show, The Joy of Painting, made him a household name and as a painting teacher to the masses. So like I mentioned before, he was raised in Orlando, Florida. After completing one year of high school and working for a time as a carpenter with his father, Ross enlisted at the age of 18 into the United States Air Force while stationed in Alaska. He took his first painting class at the United States Organization Club in the early 1960s. However, he learned the technique that would make his career, the wet-on-wet -wet a la prima, oil painting technique from television painting instructor Bill Alexander, whose show The Magic of Oil Painting aired on PBS from 74 to 82. So let's give this a quick look because it, it might look very similar. You see deep, 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 deep. Mm -hmm. See, just work like that, always from the dark into the light. And then the white from the canvas get into your brush and you get lighter, lighter, lighter up there. And then you can make your own figures, whatever you want. You can create trees there. You can have it just as a meadow. So I'm going to mute him real quick there. and just they, they, check him out in the background. So the wet on wet technique involved applying oil paint on top of still wet oil paint rather than waiting between layers for the paint to dry. This allowed the composition to be completed quickly, which made the technique particularly suitable for the half-hour television program structure. So he painted prolifically while serving in the military and sold paintings of the Alaskan landscape to tourists. So let's uh, check out one of his original paintings, which actually was on a gold pan. So this is one of Bob Ross's original paintings that he would paint for um, troops out in Alaska. Kind of interesting. Oh, the Northern Lights. So in 1981, he retired from the military and sought out private painting lessons with that gentleman, uh, Mr. Bill Alexander, eventually taking the place and proving much more successful than his teacher on PBS the Joy of Painting premiered in 1983 and ran for 11 years. So let's uh, give a look to the most popular uh, Bob Ross episode on YouTube, racking up a massive 40 stinking million views. 40 million. That's 40 that's million views on this that we are watching right here. We'll uh, listen that's to like so. It's like 30 million cheeseburgers and trees dude. and happy little things that live here in our world. All right. Just amazing. Okay. 
shoot. We had such a good place that I'd have to go fish it there. I like to fish. But I'm not a very good fisherman. I catch a little fish and take the hook carefully out of his mouth and put a Band-Aid on him, a little CPR, and pat him on the tutu and put him back in the water and go back and catch him again another day. <laughs> But we'd have to have a way to get up here if we was going to catch that fish. It would take a little of the Van Dyke Brown. Van Dyke Brown, path. dude. I'm telling you. I never took, a, we had to I never took him as someone that could listen in the military. He he acts so have us a little path serene. That we can walk yeah. back in here and catch that big old... Well, so I'm just going to mute this way. here and, and continue on with the little segment. So Ross, as you can hear there, he projected a lovable hippie persona sporting a perfect a permed afro and denim shorts or shirts excuse me and jeans and a soothing and intimate speaking voice that made the viewer feel as if it were a personal one-on-one -on -one painting lesson he also amazed view, uh, viewers with his effortless painting method creating detailed landscapes over the course of 30 minutes with the help of a house painting brush and a palette knife chatting and offering words of encouragement as he painted over the years, his folksy approach and references to happy little trees and clouds endeared him further to his fans. Ross went on to market his painting technique and established a hugely successful Bob Ross Inc., selling instructional books, videos, and a line of art supplies, and offering painting workshops with teachers trained in his method, all of which continued to be profitable into the current century, you know. So he died of lymphoma, unfortunately, at the age of 52. But uh, it doesn't end there. That's not the end of the story. Like, I know that he has since passed away, but let's let's hear on. So interest in Ross has a, had a resurgence in the 21st century with the availability of the joy of painting on such streaming platforms as YouTube, which we're walking, watching there in the background. In 2020, the Smithsonian acquired two of Ross's paintings as well as his easel palette and brushes and other object related to or objects excuse me related to the joy of painting for the American History Museum um, in Washington DC the same year Bob Ross experience opened in Muncie Indiana where his show had been filmed the museum included his studio and offered various workshops and we'll uh, check out this made for television little uh kind of interview and bit here as the conclusion of our badasses of history podcast today so let's give this a look the pandemic forced many of us to shelter inside and as we did millions turned to an old friend for comfort and inspiration here's lee cowan welcome back i'm glad you could join me today, today bob ross with his curious hair and his whisper of a voice. In our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. He was perhaps an unlikely TV celebrity. Here's a happy little bush. He lives That's right That's the famous there. one right there. But he became one of America's most famous painters, not only for his creativity, but for his positivity. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. It was like watching a magician reveal the secret of his trade. Look at that. Isn't that a nice little tree? But at the height of his fame, at only 52, Bob Ross died of lymphoma. So did Bob Ross ever paint like happy little titties years. like every other artist did? <laughs> oh just, I don't believe so. He was a very... <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> imagining somebody finds a hoard of Bob Ross's unreleased works. And like, some of them are like hentai. <laughs> he was a very <laughs> religious man, I'll just say that. To go. And yet, uh, the happy little painter is religious. perhaps more relevant now than ever. We've been in a time where be an awesome things have been so frantic and people have been so stressed and Bob Ross is the king of chill. <laughs> but what no many kidding. may not know is that when Bob Ross came into our homes all those years ago, he did it from a home. This one in Muncie, Indiana. No one really thinks about where the show was made. So many people are surprised they walk in and they're like, this is not a TV studio. This is a living room. Yeah, it, it's a living room. They basically just took an old house. And Jessica Jenkins is curator yeah, of that it's living room. What is now the Bob Ross experience. Oh, wow. At Muncie's Minatrista Museum. Be 
grave. This very spot is where for years the joy of painting was taped. Those are his paintbrushes, his palette, and of course, his easel. Every episode he would have a moment where he would beat the devil out of the brush and he would take it and he would just thump, 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 thump. And just beat the devil out of it. People come in and they recognize that. They know exactly what that is. But why but they have to clean it all, so. Well, because this was the home of the local PBS station. Traveling through the Midwest on a teaching tour, Ross approached the station with the idea of teaching in front of a camera. He was an unknown painter, though, at the time. Right? Nobody knew who Bob Ross was. They did not know who he was, but he had a lot of charm. Jim Needham was WIPB's general manager, and he knew Ross had something. His mantra was, I'll never do anything harder than my audience is able also to do. Even if this is your first seascape, you'll have some super, super results. It wasn't really just about painting. The show was about a lot more than that. I think the show is about giving the... So when I was pre-watching this, do you think that that guy sounded like he was kind of about to cry right there? A little. A little. I'm just saying, he was very moved. I noticed that. It looked like he was about to He's cry. Like, and okay. it's, hard to, it's hard to say that this isn't actually kind of a moving thing. I mean, it, it is. is. It is. I'm just saying. I, I wanted to point that out that Bob Ross, just a... he, has that, he has that effect on people. Yeah, it, it's his energy. Like, like I like I said, just how can you serve in the military, and then, uh, and then, and then you're so calm like that. Like he doesn't have a worry in the world. Like I want to see so heard something about that. Actually, I want to. I want to. I was going to say I want to see a par a parody or something where there's like Bob Ross military man. He just like snaps Akami's neck and then it's like it's a happy little accident. <laughs> <laughs> happy little oh accident. <laughs> Oopsie. And, and, and I don't know, and maybe he takes his combat knife and just slashes it. He, he, he's, like he's like Mr. Rogers. He's like Mr. Rogers, but with talent. Right. And, well, Mr. Rogers had talent for other things, but that's a story for another night. <laughs> uh, I honestly... I'd heard a story about Bob Ross in the military that he was actually a gunnery sergeant at one point and he had to shout and yell and post army or something of that nature. He had said, it just wasn't me to be like that. And he vowed to never, ever yell again. Wow. I absolutely could believe that <laughs> he is yeah. a very soft spoken guy. He is. Person agency. And doing I can't what they wanted in my to do, doing I'm something crying. they were afraid to do. I, I, and I'm not talking about painting, Ow. I'm talking about life. Ross practiced his TV paintings for days, making sure that he could complete them in front of a camera decision. in we'll less a than half an hour. Maybe back in here. He was very planned out and very methodical. But it sure didn't come off that way. It came off at very spontaneous and, oh, and yeah. calm. It wasn't like he was racing through That's it. That's the thing about Bob. You know that on the inside, he was on a speed clock getting through that painting, but on the outside, he was just so relaxed and made it look so easy. I'm just tapping here right along the bottom. Part of the Bob it's Ross experience is trying effect. your hand at painting. You go like... Myself like, included. Oh, just a little, to okay. To get a little bit on it. I see. So everybody needs a little friend. This For certified Bob Ross instructor, Doug Hallgren, that discovery that anyone can do it is the real joy of painting. Sometimes we grab their hand and we go, it's going to be okay. We're going to do this together. Just trust me on this. And they're like, oh, it worked. Nice. Wow. That did come together. I'm pleased with it. Your tree is amazing. Especially. Even mine was recognizable as something. It was a remarkable ego boost for everyone here. Oh, so good. After sitting down and painting a painting, I really believe I could do anything. His simplicity, though, often brought criticism. What did the art world think of him in general? The art world had mixed reviews. There were certainly a lot of people who categorized him as kitsch art. But if you look at the canvases that Bob did on his own time for himself, they are complex. Like this one, for example, an elaborate seascape that hung in his own home. The later he got on in Gorgeous. years, those paintings just got sharper and sharper and sharper. 
Bob Ross rarely made a dime off any of his paintings, and he never expected any of his work to ever hang in a museum. But recently, the Smithsonian acquired four Bob Ross paintings to add to its permanent collection. Now then, look right here. In that, at least, this? the man who Locked. just wanted to paint a happy little world has cemented his place in it as well. The message of having self-confidence, of trying new things, that doesn't get old. And because of that, I think that it just continues to resonate for generation after generation. So from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. Just saying, a total badass of history and in just a different way. Like, you don't have to go on a murderous rampage in order to be a badass of history. You can be a very wholesome and uh, just moving person like in a, Mr. Ross. In a, in a world full of murderous, rampaging people, we need we need people like Mr. Ross. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, we really Absolutely. And well, even because... when he was at his lowest, he would not stop trying to make other people happy. And I'm just going to reiterate, like, that is one of the main reasons that I picked the couple people that I did my first, if you're just uh, kind of joining us a little bit later, my first was Nikola Tesla, who really just wanted to make the world better and, uh, you know, did not make much money from his outrageous and um, amazing achievements. And... Same thing with Mr. Ross there. He just wanted to make in even the smallest way, you know, if he would have only changed one person, he would have been glad. He wanted to make a better world and was not looking for fame and was not looking for money. That's which is different. That's what we need more of uh, in this day and age for sure. But it's different than both my selections. They both got. Famous and were extremely wealthy by the time they were done. <laughs>